Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in wa man ihtada bi hadihi ila yaumiddin amma ba'd. All praises and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to come with another reminder from the scenes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the compilation of hadith, the 40 hadith of Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala and today we'll be doing the 22nd hadith in which <coughs> a man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the hadith narrated by Abdullah bin Jabir that a man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that do you see if I perform the obligatory salah and I fast during the month of Ramadan and I treat the lawful as law, the lawful as permissible and I treat the forbidden as prohibited but I do nothing more than that besides what I mentioned here besides the prayer, the fasting and the halal as halal and the haram as haram and I do nothing more than that do you see that I will enter into Jannah? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam respond was yes Rasulullah sallam replied and told the person yes now <coughs> we look into the words of this hadith we see that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the person he Rasulullah did not mention of anything of voluntary acts that indicates to show us and indicate to us that it is permissible to leave a voluntary act that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam scholars mentioned Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not state of an act of voluntary action as to make matters of religion easy for the person some scholars mentioned that this person was a new Muslim as the Sahabi did not even give a name to the person indicating that the person was a new Muslim, a new person that attend and ask questions to learn about Islam and since he had recently accepted Islam it was going to be over time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would open his heart due to his commitment due to the commitment and his love for deen and his heart would be open to perform and carry out this voluntary action and another point of voluntary act not mentioned here and stipulated in this condition for a person to attain Jannah is that if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were to mention or state acts of voluntary action then it can be wrongly assumed that these actions will be needed and become obligatory for a person to act, for a person to be entered into Jannah. But here it was so simple as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hinted at that there will be no need for a person to carry out for this person asking the question to carry out voluntary action for him to attain into Jannah. So in short, in other words, this hadith itself it indicates that the person who fulfills obligatory and the obligations and he avoids all prohibitions what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited then he will be able to and he will be made to enter into Jannah and there are many hadiths that emphasize this meaning a similar hadith to this hadith the effect is that a man approached Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him that tell me about an action if I do I will enter into Jannah so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa responded and told the person Worship Allah and do not ascribe anything to partner to Allah Establish your salah, give zakah and fast during the month of Ramadan And the person He leave but before leaving uh, he says By Allah I will not increase anything from this uh, Nor will I decrease anything And when the man left and was walking back Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned that if anyone is pleased and if anyone is, has a desire to see a person of Jannah, to see a person of Paradise, then look at that man. So in other words, Rasulullah was showing that this man who is going to stick to the obligation and who carries out the obligation, then he, his steadfastness will make him attain to Jannah by carrying out the obligatory acts. The means of the hadith are pretty clear. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, push away it doesn't make us uh, hint at us to just avoid the voluntary act but the fact remains that the hadith is emphasizing and is showing us that the minimum requirement for us entering Jannah and for a person entering paradise are the pillars of Islam are abiding uh, by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down for the foundation of Islam the five pillars of Islam our iman our salah our fasting our zakah 
and pilgrimage man is tatar whoever has the capability so the main requirement for entering to paradise are abiding by the five pillars of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilling the obligatory acts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the foundation of Islam and along with that is that we abide which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made permissible we follow that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made permissible and we refrain and we abstain from whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden and <clears throat> A uh, point to note from this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As I mentioned, the scholars have said the, the, One of the indications that this person that asked a question was a new Muslim And a lesson we draw from this Is that we do not we do not overwhelm Or we do not burden a new Muslim With too much information or too much actions That will make them instead of being devoted Or instead of started inclining towards the religion with love and humility and submission, you will start pushing them away. Why will you teach them or why will you pardon them with things that is beyond the pillars of Islam from the very first go, except to encourage them more into Islam? We stick towards what is compulsory for us. Yes, inshallah, over a drastic time or over time and time again, by carrying out the obligatory action, love for ibadat, love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will start building in their hand in their hearts and then they will be more inclined and they will have more inclination towards carrying out action whether it is voluntary and not only to that which is which is obligatory so first and foremost we have to gain the islamic foundation and as we draw closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will then have a desire and the ability to be able to perform optional voluntary voluntary acts alongside with the obligatory and the fara'i the compulsory action and one of the purpose of the voluntary and the optional acts is that to help us become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to compensate any shortcomings in our obligatory actions as mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a common misconception which I would like to highlight since we are on this hadith is that you know regarding to the meaning some of people may say that the man is saying in this hadith that he will only pray the obligatory salah, he will give the zakah, the mandatory zakah, and he will only fast during the month of Ramadan. That, and this action he will not, neither increase nor will he decrease from it. So the man mentioning this, yes, it's a fact that he will carry out this action. But he did not mention, by not him not mentioning certain action doesn't mean that he will carry it out. For example, the man does not mean that he will backbite or he will oppress people. He doesn't mean that he will leave those people who need his help or he will not assist those people who need his help or he will keep sinning and carrying up by carrying out these minimum actions. No, but when the man seeing these things is also referring that he will fulfill his responsibilities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even mentioned in the Quran, up to a person who carry out the minimum, he will know and he will abide by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also instructs in the Quran, even though he did not say that in his wordings. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem In tajtanibu kaba'i wa ma tunhawna anhu Nukaffir ankum sayyadikum Wa nudkhilukum murkhalan kareema Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says That If you avoid great sins uh, Which you have been forbidden We will wipe out your minor sins We will wipe out your sins for you And we will make you enter Into an uh, entrance filled with honor The entrance of honor Which will be referring to paradise so the verse here in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indicating that major sins can prevent us from entering into paradise regardless of whatever actions we do if we carry out major sins we will not be able to attain paradise so avoiding these sins and performing good deeds will be able to erase these sins and help us enter into paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so along with this verse in the hadith of mentioning and attributing that the fact that he will carry out the obligatory actions yes alhamdulillah the obligatory actions will make us attain into jannah and make us attain paradise but at the same time we will not be able to carry out those obligatory acts and just say we're doing those obligatory acts but at the same time we're sinning we have to be able to carry out the obligatory acts at the same time abstaining ourselves from sinning abstain ourselves from disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because both the hadith and the Quran 
the wardens of Rasulullah Sallallahu the wardens of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, they would mention of which is permission, which is permitted by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, those things which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has made lawful, and those which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has made forbidden. So we already know by the Quran and the Sunnah what we have to abstain from and what we have to carry out. So, in Lesson and in point of closure for the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam here is that Islam is a religion of ease, it is not a religion of burdensome. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the Quran, La yukallifullahu nafsan illa wasra'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not burden a soul more than it is capable of. So the hadith shows the character of Islam and how it is a religion, religion based with, of ease. That is a minimum requirement is there to be fulfilled by everyone which is to practice obligatory action and avoid the prohibitions of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fulfilling these minimum requirements a person deserves to enter into Jannah a person deserves entering into paradise and that is what we all struggle for and that is what we all strive for in this world so we are Stri we are striving and we are struggling to attain the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which we will only know our end result after we pass away from this world so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us that we can practice our obligatory action that we can stick upright to our obligatory action with steadfastness and with ease and comfort and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us that we abstain from whatever prohibition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from and we hold fast to whatever command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.